our guest is Carrie Rickey, longtime movie critic for the Philadelphia Inquirer. Carrie Rickey, welcome to the Drexel interview. Thank you, Paula. Carrie, you grew up in LA, you went to college in San Diego, but you have been working at the Philadelphia Inquirer since 1986. Tell us a little Guilty. bit. Guilty. <laughs> uh, well, to our great benefit. Uh, tell us about what got you into this line of work, movie reviewing, and how you ended up in Philadelphia. Uh, my parents were both immigrants uh, from Poland and Mexico, oh. and the movies were the way they learned how to be American. So going to the movies was really a key thing in my family. It was We did it as a family once a week. Uh, we would learn how Americans talked and dressed and furnished their homes, and I think maybe my parents thought movies were a little more realistic depictions of America than mm. they actually were, but um, my, my father moved here young enough that English was his, essentially his first language. My mother moved here at 13, and mm. uh, to Los Angeles at 13, and uh, she had a lot of catching up to do, so I think she actually learned English, pretty good English, I might add, from, um, from Warner Brothers and MGM <laughs> movies. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, she also was an artist, uh, she was a sculptor, uh -huh. so I, basically my, the cultural events of my life, of my youth, were museums and movie houses. Okay. And uh, so those are really important things, those were, um, they were uh, our civic religion, I guess, or our, our family religion. Hmm. And do you have siblings, by the way? I do. I yeah. have um, two older sisters, yeah. Lauren and Andrea, both in California still. And uh, so, when did you realize that movies were your thing? That you were going to spend well, your life reviewing, you um, know, going to the movies? I didn't know I'd spend my life doing it, but mm. I knew they were important. And I think certainly when I was ten or twelve, I wanted to be a poetess. Okay. I was going to be Emily a Dickinson. A common <laughs> aspiration for a <laughs> literary be person. Emily Dickinson or uh -huh. Edna St. Vincent Millay. Okay. And uh, some, someone like Adrian Rich came to the university. I went to the University of California, San Diego. Okay. And she mentioned that um, about 800 people in the country actually bought poetry books. So it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't a growth industry. <laughs> And that was really eye-opening, and, mm -hmm. uh, and she was a very great writer, a very um, mm -hmm. charismatic speaker. And I really liked movies, and I was already the movie critic for my college newspaper, and uh, soon after that, the La Jolla Light, which was the, La Jolla was the community in which my university um, was situated. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of happened from there. I went from wanting to be a poetess to wanting so to be... So were you an English major and then became it's a film study? It's more complicated, okay. of course. It's <laughs> California. It's the 70s. Mm. I had a do-it-yourself major, which was film history, art history, literature. Oh, so and humanities, and essentially. Essentially. Yeah. Okay. And okay. I got my master's there, too. Totally a D DIY major. I don't mm -hmm. know if those exist anymore, but I have a Bachelor's yeah. and a master's in DIY. <laughs> DIY. Do it yourself. Oh, okay. <laughs> I knew that I was going to get it, but it would take me a while. I think that's less common now, unfortunately. Yes. Unfor so then, so you had been the reviewer for your college paper, and I guess that started right. with and clippings. I, I got a, a fellowship in um, New York at the Whitney Museum, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess it was like 1975. And, uh, I was in New York in 1975. The, many of the best people I were. <laughs> we could afford New York in 1975. Yeah. We should have bought New York yeah. in 1975. But yeah. Indeed. Mm -hmm. um, in any case, uh, I was in New York, and I really wanted to be a movie critic, and I kept on getting hired as an art critic. Uh -huh. first, first by Art in America and Art Forum, and then by The Village Voice, and then finally The Voice let me start reviewing movies in 1979. Hmm. So you were always trying to review movies and they were asking you Well, it, it seems that um, not in this, it, at least in the 70s, not a lot of art critics were writing um, accessible English, mm -hmm. and I was. Yeah. So I was, I was in demand as that, mm -hmm. and everyone wanted to be a movie critic, so right. there was a long line for that. 
So then you began to write for the Village Voice. I did uh, first art and then movies, and uh, then I got hired by the Boston Herald. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't really like Boston much, and I moved back to New York. Uh, I was working for various magazines, mm -hmm. as movies, art, whatever, as a freelancer. And literally, oh, as I was unpacking from moving from Boston, the, the Inquirer called up, and I thought the Inquirer was a really good paper, and I'd always liked Philadelphia, mm -hmm. so I came here. So the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So you have been in all the great cities, except, I guess, Chicago. Well, actually, yeah. I have been in Chicago. <laughs> really? I, I taught the School of the Art Institute in okay. Chicago in 1981. Okay. Uh, so um, I taught film history and art history uh -huh. there. So I've been what there an too. eclectic <laughs> background. I, guess, uh, I yeah. haven't done San Francisco, and I've yeah. only lectured in Houston. So. Okay. <laughs> but so uh, I think it's pretty but, broad. But, but I've, in but your I've, done, yeah. I've done a lot of cities. And true. of these now, I guess the obvious next question is, what is, what, what is there unique about Philadelphia for you? To be a movie critic in Philadelphia, having been in New York, having been in, um, well, I guess you didn't really work in LA, but in Boston. Um, how do you feel, what's distinct about being working here or doing movie reviewing in Philly? Well, there's, that's, I guess, two questions. Yeah. Uh, one is doing movie reviewing in Philadelphia, and I, I will say that aspect of my life. Philadelphia is blessed in that it has a really wonderful art house community. Mm -hmm. um, I guess for two reasons. First, International House, the Neighborhood Film and Video Association, which started the Philadelphia Film Festival, created um, a very film literate um, constituency. Yeah. And the Ritz Theaters, uh, owned by Ray Pozel, which have only grown since they have gone from three screens to five screens to, I, last time I counted, something like 32 screens in New Jersey and, which and is where Philadelphia. I live, and that is really wonderful. Right. Um, yeah. uh, have been really powerful in kind of um, making Philadelphia a real strong, specialized film market. Mm -hmm. And what I, when I say specialized film, I mean, I don't mean Lord of the Rings, I mean Sideways, I mean mm. um, uh, Million Dollar Baby, I mean uh, smaller story-driven movies. Right, and more a more sophisticated viewing public. Not necessarily. I don't think uh, Not the Million New Dollar York. Baby yeah. is necessarily, I think that's a, a, a very easily accessible movie uh -huh. for, for any moviegoer. Uh, it's just that in the new movie order, um, the kind mm. of story-driven movies that used to be made in the 40s and 50s are no longer made by Hollywood, mm. are, are very rarely made by the studios anymore. Interesting. Uh, yeah. They tend to be made by independents. So that's part one of your question. Part okay. two is, uh, so the, the film life in Philadelphia is very wonderful. And having lectured on film in various cities in the country, I can tell you that in New York, when you talk about a movie, the questions afterwards are basically, who do you need to know? In Los Angeles or San Francisco, when you talk about movies, it's like, what did it cost? Uh, who directed it, who's, you know, they, they ask about te technical yeah. questions. In Washington, they're going to, um, they'll, you know, I've spoken at the National Gallery or, mm -hmm. or the movie things, movie events there. The questions will more be, be about, biographical about the directors or the actors. Mm -hmm. In Philadelphia, it's always, and I don't know whether there's, there's so many psychologists in the city yeah. or whatever, it's always about psychology. It's How always about, and um, other, uh, uh, of my friends who have done the circuit always say, Philadelphia is always going to ask you the deep meaning questions about mm. psychology and motivation, and they'll see things that other audiences don't huh. see. So it's very, it's, it's Do very. Do you like that? Uh, it's yeah. it's fascinating. I get yeah. questions from um, local audiences here that I've never gotten in any other city. So it's, it's, it's we're a deeper community. Um, is that? I think part of, part of mm. us are deeper, and some of us are happily shallow, <laughs> and that's okay too. <laughs> I mean, I think okay. both is okay, but, yeah. but it's a, it's but a very interesting it's, it's that you a, can characterize the community. Uh, you can, yeah. and because uh, there's certain uh, film programs such as Talk Cinema, uh, run by Harlan Jacobson, mm -hmm. and I'll speak on a movie in Washington and New York and in Philadelphia, and the questions are just going to be different here. Hmm. And I've never spoken at the Talk Cinema in New Jersey, but I understand the questions are different in New Jersey. Is this the Ritz? Yeah, uh, the Ritz, yeah. It, it, uh, it happens at the Ritz, but it's run by yeah. um, a guy from New York named right. Harlan Jacobson. Right. 
and it's where you can uh, uh, a program where you see movies in advance of their distribution, so you can right. get the jump on your friends uh -huh. and the critics. Oh, well, I'll uh, have to go to the one uh, in New Jersey and report yeah, back to you. About uh, that. But, yeah, but but I, I hear from the people who did New Jersey, there's a different um, quality of questions there. Hmm. Uh, the second part of your question, which was Philadelphia, I, I people laugh at me when I say this. Um, Philadelphia is a lot like Los Angeles in the 1950s. It's a city of neighborhoods. Hmm. Um, it's got this really great park at the heart of it. Uh, Fairmont Park is wonderful. Um, it's actually substantially bigger than Griffith Park in Los Angeles. Hmm. And there's actually a movie joke about this. When um, Grace Kelly married the Prince of Monaco and introduced her intended to her, to her father, her father was then head of the Fairmont Park Commission. And when he shook Prince Rainier's hand, he said, my principality is bigger than yours. <laughs> and he was right. That's Fairmont a great Park story. <laughs> many times greater than, huh. than Monaco. Oh, oh, so Philadelphia reminds you of L.A. in the 1950s. Because my next question mm. is going to be, do you ever miss L.A.? But I guess oh, if well, it's I like certainly your... miss the weather. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and the vegetation and the weather is quite different. But and L.A. is not what it was in the 1950s. No, L.A. Now. is uh, the density in Los Angeles right now is na approaching that of New York. It's, yeah. it's a much uh, denser and more difficult city. Um, I really, one of the, my motivations to move east initially, not only was New York the media capital, but I never wanted to get in a car again. Mm -hmm. I had just had it with freeways. I'd had it with being in my yeah. car. Um, and I really enjoy being a pedestrian. I really like not yeah. driving. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's great. I also, uh, you know, California has a really wonderful long history, but it's mostly the history before colonization. And uh, between about 17, 90 and 1910, Los Angeles doesn't have very interesting history, but Philadelphia does, yeah. and yeah. that's that's very exciting to me because mm -hmm. I am in part a historian and I'm interested in the stories sure. of, of cities sure. and who live there. So, to the second part of your qu question, I, I enjoy Philadelphia as a city. Okay. Well, thanks. Um, you mentioned Adrian Rich as someone who, ironically, got you into movies as opposed to poetry. Well, uh, who, who sort uh, of, who, who actually shouldn't get me into well, She kind of encouraged me to find a, a career that would be remunerative. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's interesting because um, I, I think some people think of you as having a feminist slant as a critic. And I wanted you to address that. I wonder if that's simply because you're a woman and you have an awareness of issues relating to women, or whether in fact you think that that is brought to bear in your reviewing? Uh, well, I guess if I were Carrie Rickey and a man, and you wouldn't ever ask me, do you have a masculinist slant? <laughs> so you don't like my so, question? Well, uh, no, it's just I we am. Grow up I am we I we am went who to college in the 1970s. Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 I am who I am, and I'm, I'm part of that era. But yeah. you know, my mom, without having a brand on her, was a feminist. She, yeah. she worked for a living, and she thought there should be equal pay for equal work. Right. And if that's I, I call it, you know, um, I guess democracy. Uh, some people call it feminism. I just think there's right, I, I right. call it equality. Right. And and well, <laughs> I'm thinking of this a recent column that you wrote about how few women were named in the m favorite movie star poll, mm -hmm. only Julia Roberts, and it irritated you. It, it um, did. And oh, well, because it, I actually it irritates me for ten different reasons. Uh, right. And. Let's, let's explain to the listeners that yeah. every year the Harris organization does a poll, who's your favorite movie star? And it used to be that some, you know, in 1980 there was four women on it. There was Jane Fonda, there was Sissy Spacek, there was, I don't know, I can't remember the other women on it, but yeah. there were Barbara Streisand, Jessica Lange, I can't, right. I think. So there were a lot, four out of ten were women, and there was like, you know, there was men and women on the mm -hmm. list. But since about 1985, it's been like, all men and one woman. And hmm. the woman usually is Julie Roberts. Occasionally it will be Sandra Bullock. And that irritates me because the women, the people on that list tend to, because they get that vote and they're, they're in the public consciousness, they are 